Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at deriving an expression for the velocity of an object undergoing simple harmonic motion. So let's get started. Now, for an object undergoing simple harmonic motion, you need to be able to derive an expression for its velocity. So I'm going to walk you through that step by step. So it says we can derive an expression for the velocity of the end of the tuning fork prong. So in the previous 3D video on the kinematics of SHM, we looked at expressions for the displacement of an object undergoing simple harmonic motion. And we're going to use that same example of a tuning fork that has been struck and think about the velocity of each prong on the tuning fork. So we can start by saying since velocity is the rate of change of displacement, we can write V equals dy by dt, where y is our displacement and therefore V equals the rate of change of that. So if we assume the tuning fork prong starts from its equilibrium position at time t equals zero, i.e. its initial condition, then we can think of the displacement expression as being y equals a sine omega t. And therefore, if we differentiate this to get an expression for velocity by subbing it in here, we get v equals d by dt of a sine omega t. So if we differentiate that once with respect to time, then the sine will become cosine and we'll multiply this expression by omega because this is times by the t as part of this expression. So we end up with v equals a omega cos omega t. Therefore, an expression for the maximum velocity of an object undergoing SHM when y equals zero is given by v max equals a omega. So that is when the object hasn't moved yet and it's at its equilibrium position, which we assumed at the start of this derivation, then we can sub in t equals zero, i.e. the initial condition, to see that cosine of omega t, i.e. cosine of zero, gives you one. So that gives us this maximum velocity expression, v max equals a omega. Now, note that this expression is not given on the relationship sheet in the exam, so it's helpful to be able to remember it or just to be able to derive it starting with y equals a sine omega t and differentiate it once with respect to time. Now, we don't just want an expression for the maximum velocity, we want a general expression for the velocity of the object undergoing SHM. So we're going to continue this derivation. So we've already differentiated the displacement expression y equals a sine omega t to get v equals a omega cos omega t. And now what we're going to do is use this expression here, which you might remember from maths in the form of x, such as sine squared x plus cos squared x equals one. And here we're writing it in terms of omega t because that is within the cosine here. And so we can say that sine squared omega t plus cos squared omega t equals one. So if we rearrange this for cos squared omega t, first of all, then we get one minus sine squared omega t. And if we then take the square root of that, then we get cos omega t is equal to the square root of one minus sine squared omega t. And that is why in this line here, we've written the velocity as v equals plus or minus a omega times the square root of one minus sine squared omega t, because this is cos omega t here and not cos squared omega t. So we had to square root this cos squared omega t to just get cos omega t so that we could replace it in this expression. So we now have v equals plus or minus a omega root one minus sine squared omega t, where the plus or minus has just been introduced because we took a square root. And we can manipulate the term inside the square root a wee bit further. So if we leave everything else the same apart from the sine squared omega t, we can actually rewrite the sine squared omega t as y squared divided by a squared. And that comes from the expression for the displacement up here, y equals a sine omega t. So you can hopefully see here that if you divide both sides by a, then you get y divided by a equals sine omega t. And then if you square both sides, you get that y squared over a squared would equal sine squared omega t. And that is why we can replace this sine squared omega t with y squared over a squared. Now there's one last step that we need to do to tidy things up inside the square root here. And that is if we take the amplitude a symbol here and we put it into the square root then that means that we have to write this a as a squared within the square root because the square root of a squared would just give you a again outside the square root term. So if we want to write it within the square root, we have to square it again. So that means we can times all of this term inside the square root by a squared. So if I do that, I end up with a squared minus y squared a squared over a squared. So the a squareds will actually just cancel out on the top and bottom. And then I'm left with this expression here v equals plus or minus omega times the square root of a squared minus y squared. And this is the equation that you'll see for the velocity of an object undergoing SHM on your relationship sheet. So to make sure you can do this, I would start with a blank sheet of paper, start with the displacement expression, and then see if you can go through step by step, just like I did here, including writing down the steps that I didn't explicitly write down here in the notes, but the ones that I explained as we walked through it. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.